Welcome back to Star Trek Online. We're currently in the midst of meetings and simulations to vie against the threat posed by the Borg Kingdom, mirror universe Borg, that have been making incursions into our universe. Fortunately, we received some aid in the form of the Aetherians, mysterious and powerful aliens who have made it their mandate to halt the Borg Kingdom's expansion, and a partnership has been struck in opposing this menace. Additionally, we have also drawn in unexpected allies from the Tholian Assembly against them too. The representative of the Aetherians contacts us, Thassin Fai, with a new briefing to attend on the next stage of our counter-offensive. Cordial greetings. I request your presence at a gathering on Station Deep Space Nine. We shall discuss the Borg Kingdom problem and potential solutions. We live at a perilous time, friend, but recall our axiom. Through harmony, we are secure. Through unity, we are strong. Together we will strive to defeat our mutual enemy and establish peace for one and all. Is it wrong that her rhetoric is a little haunting, even if the sentiment is very Federation? After checking out the rewards for this mission, we let her know that we'll depart for Deep Space Nine immediately. The Tholians might not be the most hospitable species, but they've always seen damage in the fabric of reality as issues that only they are equipped to handle, unless of course they're the ones making them. At least, on the subject of the Borg, they have proved willing to cooperate, or at the very least remain neutral in our dealings. As for the Aetherians, I feel that Starfleet is putting a lot of trust into a species we know very little about. Maybe Admiral Quinn knows more than he's letting on, and I'm just being kept in the dark, but they seem a little too wholesome and convenient. Maybe all the warfare in the past two years has made Mark Hale here a little jaded, but sometimes things seem too good to be true. What Admiral Mark Hale doesn't know is that this is about to be the worst day of his life. Joining us for the briefing is Admiral Kumaki, representing the Lucari and Kantari Concordium, Captain Harry Kim of the USS Inoue, an Orga class temporal vessel outfitted for such space phenomena. Together they were part of the first team to engage the Borg. We also have Representative Loris for the Dominion keeping tabs on the situation. Chancellor Lorel is of course here representing the Klingon part of the Kitimat Alliance, alongside her torchbearer Jaula, a former enemy, now allied as placed in time. Rounding out the Kitima Alliance is Datun, proconsul of the Romulan Republic and an old friend and founder of New Romulus. For the Tholian's part, they've dispatched Bright Eyes as an ambassador for his people in the Massa, the Tholian who brokered their aid in the first place. After some small talk, we receive word that the Aetherians have docked and are on their way. They've been working with a Starfleet team and captain to add some of their anti-Borg technology to our ships and away teams to give us a better chance at fighting. Quinn speaks to us before the start. Welcome to Deep Space Nine. Tassin Fey, the leader of the Aetherian starship Harmony, will be making a presentation soon, alongside one of our finest captains. While you're waiting, I encourage you to meet with the specialists here to get their insights on the upcoming operation. Very well, let's get people's opinions on this endeavor, starting with Bright Eyes' aspirations for the meeting. The summit will begin soon. 
While I remain optimistic, it is not a feeling shared by many of my superiors in the assembly. Well, at least you're in high spirits, but uh, why is that? Tholians are often slow to place trust in outsiders. While the Aetherians did provide timely aid against the Borg Kingdom, their extra-dimensional origins raised a number of questions within our leadership ranks. We know very little about them. While others may place their trust in them, it will not be easily won with my people. Well, it's good to hear I'm not the only one with reservations, and I appreciate your uh, diplomatic tact on being here. Next, we see what Captain Kim has to say. We've held off the Borg Kingdom before, and we're ready to do it again. Our new allies were eager to join the fight, and I certainly can't argue with the results. Yes, their vessels are certainly impressive. Maybe that's part of what troubles me. Tactically, I wonder how we'd fare if they turned their tech against us. The Aetherians have been in non-stop talks with the Alliance command staff since they arrived here. I have a feeling that whatever they've cooked up is going to be big. Maybe on a scale we haven't seen since the Iconian War. Well, you can tell them I'm not causing another paradox to fix this mess. Next up, Admiral Kamaki's thoughts on the matter. Good to see you, my friend. It seems we're about to set off on another bold undertaking soon. Yes, and it's all been very hush-hush. The arrival of the Aetherians was rather fortunate for those in the Alliance. Adding a new ally against the Borg Kingdom may well tip the odds into our favour. Yes, and they've proven very willing to work with us. Let's hope there is no ulterior motive. I suppose we'll learn of the action plan soon enough. I do hope it's a good one. As do I, Admiral. Just heard from Ops. The briefing is about to start. Thank you all for coming. The attacks from the Borg Kingdom are a threat to us all. We've been working on a strategy with the Aetherians. Several tactical initiatives are underway as we speak, but there is a new critical issue to deal with. A reality vortex has appeared in what you call fluidic space. That region has a unique extra-dimensional nature. It connects to every point in the multiverse. If our enemy controls that vortex, they will be able to attack anywhere, at any time. Unfortunately, fluidic space disrupts Aetherian neural processes. So, the task of closing that vortex falls to us. I'll be leading a strike force to fluidic space to get the job done. Hopefully, we'll achieve our objectives before hostile forces arrive. We will do what we must to succeed. Thank you for your time. May I speak with you for a moment? Interesting. So fluidic space lies outside of the known multiverse, and because of this, the kingdom's targeted dislocation is a staging ground. No wonder it's all been so classified. As a reminder, fluidic space is inhabited by species A472, the Undine, a species with a hostile and dangerous history against our own realm. The entirety of the last Klingon War of 2405 to 09 began thanks to Undine infiltration, and the shapeshifters have been keeping an eye on our activities ever since. It's a bit of a powder keg of a place. As for Captain Esri Dax, she's had a long career in Starfleets, beginning as a counsellor on the USS Destiny in 2374 before becoming the unexpected host to Dax and the ninth host of the shared existence. This led to her transferring to this very station from the Dominion War, and in post times she acclimated to her new memories and eventually transferred to the Command Division. Her history in Star Trek Online is loosely based in the timeline of the first Splinter Universe, or the book's canon, but it has taken its own liberties. In that universe, she eventually separated from Julian Bashir, while in STO's setting, the two eventually married. Aside from that, it's likely a similar path, with her first rise into EXO of the USS Defiance. Eventually, she made her way as a science officer to the Aventine, and it was there that her captain perished and she took command and retained the field promotion to captain. Initially, she was worried that her rapid rise might rub people the wrong way, but it's hard to deny that she effectively had the combined memories of Jadzia and all other Dax hosts to draw on. In 2401, she resigned from Starfleet, among others, in protest of how they handled the whole Klingon uncovering of Species 8472. She and Bashir returned to Trill, where they opened a private practice, but she rejoined sometime before 2409 and took command of the newly overhauled Vesta-class Aventine. Since then, she's worked mostly on science missions and even alongside her husband, who uncovered the link between the fungal species of the Alachi, Ketracel White, and picked up Paul Stamps' research on the mycelial plane. Over the last month or so, it looks like she's been working with the Aetherians as the Federation liaison. As for the scene Fae, we know shockingly little. 
Sincere greetings. It is an honor to be working with an officer of such high caliber. We are grateful indeed. Yes, thank you. And for our part, we're certainly grateful for the assistance you've provided against the Borg, he says with narrowed eyes. We have learned much throughout our conflict with the Borg Kingdom. We were happy to share our knowledge, and we have provided technology that will improve your effectiveness against them in battle. Interesting, thank you. I suppose we'll be testing those improvements sooner rather than later. Quite so. I believe you will find them most effective against our common foe. I believe Captain Dax wanted to speak with you before you depart. Are there any questions I can answer for you at this time? What do you want? I mean, ah, <clears throat> yes. We have a number of options, but it's our chance to learn something and maybe alleviate our fears. So, what is your universe like? Most of our universe has known peace for many a galactic cycle. Our Concordium has been an integral reason for that. Occasional conflicts would occur from time to time, but most were resolved peacefully until the arrival of the Born Kingdom. All right, so a galaxy-wide Concordium maintaining order, not necessarily dictatorial. How did the fight with the Borg start then? We have known of them and the nature of their universe for many cycles. We did not establish conflict due to their hateful, violent tendencies. Unfortunately, they discovered our universe. Despite our efforts to prevent conflict, they followed their nature and launched a brutal invasion into our space. For the first time in countless cycles, war came to the Ethereum Concordium. Sometimes, despite our best efforts, conflict ensues anyway, and we have to push through it. It seems the Concordium does put diplomacy first, but some foes, like the Borg, just don't negotiate. They don't stop. I mean, it checks out against what we understand. Do you have any more questions for me? If not, Captain Dax would like to speak to you next. How goes the battle? After many cycles of relentless conflict, we have managed to drive them back to their own universe. The cost has been terrible. Entire civilizations lost to warfare, to assimilation, and now they are here, in your universe. Seeking once again to subjugate untold trillions. We will not let them succeed. What happened in our universe must not happen here. So, the Borg Kingdom pretty much raised your galaxy in a way that our Borg never managed. Well, stopping them is something we can agree on. Do you have any more questions for me? If not, Captain Dax would like to speak to you next. No, 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 thank you for your time. It's deviated some of my qualms. Having spoken to Thassim Fai, can we just call them Thassim? Whatever, we move on to Captain Dax. Hello there. Nice to finally meet you. You've got quite the reputation. I'm glad you and your crew are joining us on the mission. We need the best and brightest against the Borg Kingdom. Well, I, su I suppose I could go find them. Oh, you meant me. Well, we're ready to do our part. Your anti-Borg activities in the Akamar sector make for interesting reading. Glad to hear it. Fluidic space can be challenging. And that's before you add the Undine to the equation. They're not terribly fond of anything from our part of space-time. We're hoping to avoid any sort of incident with them, but shutting down that vortex is our top priority. Right, although from my own experiences, they're pretty quick to respond to intrusion, unless otherwise engaged. The defense upgrades we receive from the Ethereans are impressive. The enhancements to targeting, weapon modulation, and power systems will really make a big difference. They've also provided extensive tactical data on Borg Kingdom vessels and defense systems. We'll be ready for action should we run into them on the mission. Right, I'll see that the Arbiter incorporates those modulation algorithms for sure. I'm tired of being at a disadvantage against the Borg. Once we're back on our ships, my crew will use tech on the Aventine to open a quantum singularity. We'll use that to travel to fluidic space. Are you ready to go? So, our mission is to open a singularity aperture to fluidic space with our small fleet, enter and locate the Borg Kingdom's fissure and shut it down. We've done this before with the Tholians and Lucari technology, so we know we can do this. The real problem is that we need to do this without angering the Undine, who are notorious for purging any intrusion into their realm. Admiral Kumaki, Captain Kim and I are the previous team assigned to engaging the Kingdom, while Captain Dax has been working with the Ethereans on this plan of action, so it seems this will be our team. 
Setting aside my personal suspicions of our new allies, they're at least proving very useful with their upgrades. The rest of the task force has assembled. Head to the following coordinates, and the Aventine will create the Quantum Singularity. Understood. Armed her out. Moves into position. Task Force, this is Docking Control. Confirm your boards are green for departure. Aventine to Docking Control. Boards are green. Inoue reporting. Everything is green on our end. Armager, good to go. Docking Control, Riscava reports green for departure. Acknowledged, Task Force. You are cleared for departure. All ships, make way to the designated coordinates. I look forward to learning more about fluidic space. I hope you don't learn about its dangers, like the Undine. Oh, of course. Captain Kim here had a near-death encounter with Species 8472 38 years ago when he was an ensign on Voyager. He was slashed by one and almost digested by their consuming enzymes. That will leave an impression, I'm certain, and it's clear he still maintains a, let's say, dislike for them. The Inoue is an Orga class science ship with a specialty in temporal phenomena, which by extension means it's adept at handling space-time disturbances. Captain Kim was put in command earlier this year alongside his officers Commander Zoff and Erin McDonnell specifically for the anti-Borg operations. The design is an evolution of the Trident science ship, while Dax's command is the USS Aventine in its Avesta class refit. The Vesta class will get its own video, but it remains one of my favourite non-canon vessels. While in the books, the Vesta, MCC 82601, was designed to combine the quantum slipstream drive with warp and test these systems out in 2380, this role has been replaced in canon by the USS Dauntless, but the Vesta can still find a role in this field. The Aventine, specifically, saw combat against the Borg in its first year out of space dock, the aforementioned skirmish that resulted in Esri being promoted to captain. Its purpose was essentially, originally, to be the head of a new era of deep space exploration into the Gamma Quadrant, using its new slipstream drive, but it did not get to play that role for some time, ending up being a leading vessel in conflicts with the Borg. But in 2381, the Battle of the Azio Nebula saw this vessel push the Borg back into the Delta Quadrant, in STO's timeline. Check out my Azio Nebula Patrol video for more info there. By 2409, the Vesta class has been overhauled to its current look, maintaining the overall profile and that unique blue hull colouring, but it's better suited for its role now as an exploratory craft, meaning it's a good all-rounder with a slightly heavier leaning on the scientific and reconnaissance side of things with a crew of 750. Alongside these two vessels is the Raskava, the Yukari flagship, and our Odyssey class USS Armager. We're all set over here. Ready to take a trip to fluidic space? Oh, it's so inviting. Let's strap our bands to the nacelles and go for a paddle. green glow and dense matter of this realm is certainly a unique view every time we end up here. Not quite underwater, it certainly mirrors the look of a nautical environment, and we have arrived in an area inhabited by these large coral-like growths of organic matter. We've encountered these before, and aside from navigational hazards, their purpose is unclear. Perhaps this is just what passes for an asteroid field in fluidic space. Our ships are gently buffeted by currents, leaving them to drift ever so slightly if we do not maintain corrections to hold our position. But with the complete lack of stars to navigate by, we have to rely on observation alone. Transit complete. All stations report they're ready for action. Hope your helm's up to the task of piloting in fluidic space. A local currents can get a bit unruly. Uh, according to scans, fluidic density is normal. Nothing too bad so far. Unfortunately, local conditions are generating an unusual amount of sensor interference. We're not exactly flying blind, but our scanning quality is quite limited. Great. Literal soup out there. Not the best start when stage one is literally recon. I don't like this. Neither do I. If the Undine find us, we might not know they're coming until it's too late. And trust me, you do not want to 
someone to be on the wrong end of an Undine ambush. Ugh, I feel he's speaking from personal experience there. Well, we first need a way to expand our sight, so recommendations, Captain. Let's start with a coordinated long-range scan. See if we can gather more information working together. If that doesn't work, we can use deep space probes. By linking probes as we travel, we can create a sensor network. That should extend our scanning range considerably. Both solid plans. Let's meet at the designated location ahead. We set off through the murk to find our quarry. Somewhere near here, there's apparently a large vortex into whatever realm the Borg Kingdom are staging from, but we can't detect anything at range in this matter. Our journey to the first point is an uneventful one, but our ship apparently has the smoothest of rides, as the Aventine and Rescarva, to my knowledge, have not been here before, while both Captain Kim and I have. Long range scan complete. We're not detecting any sign of the vortex. Well, we have nothing. We have nothing either. I think it's time we try plan B. Let's send out a deep space probe. Agreed. Plan B. Prep the first probe. We're ready to go over here. Aventine and Rescava report the same. Once all the probes are deployed, we can head to their location and try another long range scan. This time, boosted by the probe sensors. Monitor the probe trajectories. No telling how local currents will affect them. Good idea. A shift in current could divert them into an obstacle. We should head to the designated location. The next stop is now the optimal location to drop a second probe, and with each booster we can expand our network and vision. Hopefully we'll pick something up soon. Fascinating. I do hope to return one day to conduct research. Good luck with that. The Undine might have other ideas. Yeah. Attempts at negotiation with 8472 tend to end poorly. Our best efforts have generally been met with, well, leave us alone and we'll leave you alone. Our prior encounters have included them replacing the Gaul leadership, them replacing a Vulcan ambassador, them replacing a friendly science specialist on the Dyson Spheres, them trying to crush Admiral Tuvok's mind. We've even driven our universe's Borg out of fluidic space before, and the Undine simply took that as a well, we'll let you leave in peace. Then there was that time they brought a planet killer to our doorstep. That was all very fun. Suffice to say, we cannot count on their aid. Eventually, however, we reach our second destination. Look for any EM field spikes or drops. Could be caused by the vortex. Long range scan complete. Even with the probes, we're not finding anything. <sighs> nope. There's nothing to do but prepare more probes, widen the net. Probes on standby. Try these coordinates. We picked up something faint over there for a moment. Might be a sensor glitch, or it might be what we're looking for. Well, I will trust the innerways sensors over the armages. Prep the next bout of probes and set course. Let's head to the next coordinates. I wonder if fluidic space affects Undine sensors as much as ours. Probably not. Assume they'll see us before we see them. I know those biosigns. It's a pod of Gekli. As we approach the pod of Cosmozoans, they alter course to intercept us, and I do wonder if we're going to have to alter our energy frequencies or prepare for a ramming from the bull of the group. But fortunately not. Instead, they simply fall into step alongside our vessel, matching course and speed and surfing along in our wake either to save energy on their journey, or simply for fun. It's very peaceful for a time, and I can imagine the crew making for the nearest windows to watch this peaceful species sail with us. That is until something else spooks them away. Attention all hands! We're detecting weapon fire ahead! Acknowledged. Is it the Undine? Yes, and that's not all. We're also reading Borg Kingdom weapon signatures. Looks like they picked a fight with the Undine. Something that's been bothering me for a two. The Borg being here has been for a while already. Well, let's see if the Undine will allow our assistance. Are you sure that's wise? We might wind up fighting both the Undine and the Borg. Well, if that happens, then we run. Then again, the Undine may think twice about firing on us if we help them with the Borg. I think it's worth the risk. The Undine are many things, but they're not idiots. Is that a course? So much for the peaceful journey through fluidic space. I'm surprised it took this long to run into the Undine. Right, you knew it was going to get bumpy. 
Ahead, we can see the weapons fire that we detected, a small cluster of four Borg probe ships around a single Vila-class bioship. Target Borg vessels only. Do not engage the Undine unless fired upon. Monitor Undine targeting. If it switches to us... An understandable precaution, Captain. Trust me. Things with the Undine can go south in a hurry. All hands. You are clear to engage the board. Ahead, we can see the bioship employing its ability to disrupt the space-time, creating pockets of dense fluidic matter to slow the probes down, and we join in, not touching our potential ally in this skirmish. That's the last of the board. Shows Let's hope the Undine don't provide the encore. Fortunately, Borg probes are just there to uncover new targets and not really comparable to our ships. Alliance missiles. I am designate 6623, commander of the Undine vessel Morano. You are not authorized to operate in our territory. Fire you here. Wow, they actually hailed us first. Usually it's straight to the shooting. Well, honesty is best here, so we tell 6623 that we're here to close an aperture made by the Borg. We know of this anomaly. It is in a nearby sector, occupied by a Borg unit complex. A fleet of their warships defends it. Oh, they've already deployed a unit complex. We'd hoped we'd have reached them before they even got this far. It seems we have a common problem, and a common enemy. I propose a tactical alliance between us. We will remove Borg occupation forces from politic space, and eliminate the disruptive anomaly together. That's... A better offer than I expected. I expected I'd have to leave on to convince you, but... Well... Unexpected, yes. Incomprehensible. Your alliance is in fact composed of a number of former enemies. Surely a temporary expansion of said alliance is feasible. Valid point, Commander Digits. Very well. We will travel to the provided coordinates when you are ready. A warning. So, we have another unexpected ally, but hopefully one that will not turn on us as soon as our mission is completed. The Undine, now aiding us, perhaps shows us that they grasp the scale of this threat. And as for the first part, well, we'll end it here. Thank you for joining me on this new adventure of Star Trek Online's story series, and I look forward to the next part where we engage the Borg. Until then, I've been Rick, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.